Welcome to Hello Monday, where Rachel talks all things ballet and fitness, sharing strategies and techniques to help you start, grow, and create a thriving business using your passion for ballet and fitness. And here's your host, Rachel Withers. Hello, I'm Rachel Withers and welcome to my weekly live stream, Hello Monday, where every Monday at 7pm I'll be talking about ballet and fitness and sharing strategies and techniques to help you grow your fitness business, start a fitness business and really build a thriving and incredible business using your passion for ballet and fitness. Now, today I actually thought I'd talk about cultivating emotional resilience in uncertain times. We are all dealing with uncertainty right now during this coronavirus pandemic. Life is filled with uncertainty, especially at, well, especially at times like this. While many things remain outside of your control, your mindset is key to coping with difficult circumstances and facing the unknown. As human beings, we crave security. We want to feel safe and have a sense of control over our lives and well-being. Fear and uncertainty can leave you feeling stressed, anxious and powerless over the direction of your life. It can drain you emotionally and trap you in, in a downward spiral of endless what ifs and worst case scenarios about what tomorrow will bring. So I really thought today, right now, it's never felt more appropriate to talk about building up emotional resilience um, during this global pandemic. So what would be absolutely fantastic is if you could just say hello in the comments box. It is always absolutely fantastic to hear from you. So please say hello. Tell me where you tell me where you're from, what you do, and also um just just tell me kind of what you want to know, what you want to get out of these these live streams. Right. Okay. So Hi Sarah, good to good to um, see you. Um, good to have you here. Right, and um, right now, as I say, it, I really felt it was appropriate to talk about building up emotional resilience uh, because of this global pandemic. And it's a time where everyone is worried about their health, their loved ones, their jobs, and so many other aspects of life. And um, we are concerned about the future of our country, really, and, and the world in general. It is a difficult time, to say, um, to say the least. It, it's the very definition of uncertain, and we've all had to change the way we live and work to adapt during these times. Um, we're all different in how much uncertainty we can tolerate in life. And some people seem to actually um, enjoy taking risks and living unpredictable lives, while others find the, the whole um, randomness of life deeply distressing. But all of us do have a limit. And if you feel overwhelmed by uncertainty and worry, it's important to know right now that you are not alone. Many of us are in the same boat and feel the same as you. It's also important to realise that no matter how helpless and hopeless you feel, there are steps that you can take to better deal with um, these uncontrollable circumstances and actually alleviate your anxiety and face the unknown with with a little more confidence. So great, lovely to hear that um, you're looking forward to the live stream. I'm sorry because we're going through StreamYard. I can't actually see your name, but it's great to um, great to see that you're looking forward to this live stream um, tonight. So thank you ever so much for um, joining me. I just so um, really appreciate any feedback. Hi, Lisa. So, um, hi, Lisa. I'm glad you're looking forward to this uh, live stream tonight. So, what I want to say is, first of all, if you're here right now, well, congratulations, actually, because seriously, we are all doing better than we 
than we think we are. And it's certainly impressive to think that you're even thinking of finding ways to build up your resilience right now. Many people are struggling to keep their heads above water. So finding time to be mindful, to be mindful and look for solutions is, is something worth celebrating. And despite the unprecedented nature of our current situation, I'm still reminded of actually, well, how I felt during a period of my life several years ago, where I really felt very uncertain uh, about everything. I was unhappy. I was emotionally overwhelmed. I was getting divorced. I had two children to raise and I felt that I'd lost my great passion uh, in life and I'd really lost direction as to where I was. You see, I was a dancer before I had my children and I'd left it behind in favour of the most important role of all, which is motherhood. But despite how much I cherish the role of motherhood, losing Bally left me feeling lost. I was I was completely disconnect, disconnected from my own life, both physically and mentally. And this left me feeling like I couldn't show up fully for my for my children or or for myself. But once I actually rediscovered ballet, all of that changed. I reconnected with my body, my mind and my passion. And I turned my love of dance into a career opening uh, with opening my business, um, Bally Be Fit. However, as an entrepreneur, I'm not, you know, I'm not immune to the current situation that we are all collectively facing right now. This global crisis affects businesses, it affects morale and our ability to plan for the future. But I've learned one important thing over the past few years since launching my business. Uncertain times always come around, so you need to know how to deal with them. And it may be a global pandemic that is completely out of your hands. It may be financial vulnerability of quitting, you know, if of having to leave your job or quit a job, be made redundant to start. And you may then decide that you have to start a business or perhaps it's the emotional vulnerability of, of all of this and feeling the responsibilities of supporting your family through all of this. The point is life is full of events that knock the wind from our sails. There is no way to know when they're coming, but we can prepare, we can cultivate emotional resilience. So what is emotional resilience? Well, emotional resilience is your ability to respond to stressful or unexpected situations and crises. And having emotional resilience does not mean your life becomes easier or you eliminate the stress altogether. It just means that you can endure the difficult times when they do arise and move on with your life more quickly. Emotional resilient people have, have more of the, the ability to go with the flow. They have less resistance to changes and challenges and more flexibility when, when working through them. And force and Rigidity can appear strong from the outside, but in uncertain times, resilience is the quality that best helps us weather the storm. Resilience is what gets us back up off our feet quickly after life knocks us down. So that brings me to another question, actually. What do you think of resilience? What do you think of? Well, and when you think of resilience, what do you, who do you think of? You see, is it, you know, let's think about Nelson Mandela and, and how managing every day in that prison cell for 27 years and then going on to become president and unite South Africa. 
he he actually famously said do not judge me by my success judge me by how many times i fell down and i got back up again and Oprah Winfrey, she uh, who endured a childhood of poverty and abuse, and then you know, went on to become one of the wealthiest and most influential women of her lifetime. When when asked about how she kept going through everything, she said, "Challenges are gifts that force that force us to search for a new center of gravity. Don't fight them; just find a new way." to stand. And there are actually so many examples of famous actors, writers, designers, innovators, business people who out there who have failed time after time, and they just kept getting back up. And eventually, one of those times they got back up, they succeeded. And it's actually an old Japanese proverb, fall down seven times, get up eight. I always think that such a succinct way of putting it, putting it, I think that that, you know, it really is such a great way to put it that fall down seven times, get up eight. Now, resilience doesn't have to mean changing the world or becoming rich and famous. It could be as much as seeing an idea or a project through when nobody else believed in it. It could be hanging in there in terrible circumstances and making it to the other side. Some of the greatest minds have preached about the art of resilience because it really applies to every area of our lives. And when Winston Churchill, you know, when he came into power and we looked like we were losing the war, he famously said, if you're going through hell, keep going. An American poet and civil rights activist, Maya Angelou, gave her own version of what resilience means to her. I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refused to be reduced by it. And even J.K. Rowling, who was a single mother and you know, and getting by on government assistance before the success of Harry Potter, acknowledged that. Rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. That's what um, JK Rowling said. So we all know we need resilience in our lives. And this is not just to push forward to success in uncertain times, but also to look after ourselves in difficult situations. It is an act of self care so so how do we improve our resilience and i'm going to share um that in their book resilience the science of mastering life's greatest challenges authors stephen southwick and chris carney lay out 10 characteristics that resilient people have in common the pair studied everyone from Vietnam prisoners of war to trauma victims to discover the traits of resilient people. After studying this topic for over 20 years, they noticed several patterns and decided to share them to help people develop more resilience for themselves. And I'm actually going to touch on the key points that their book touches uh, upon and I'm going to share this um, with you so please as always keep those comments coming in click it please give me feedback share where you are tell me how you're feeling right now with everything you know how are you getting through with it what techniques are you using uh, in terms of you know, helping your mindset and be resilient and please share that with me because it's just fantastic to get feedback and to know where you are with everything right now so just excuse me one minute so right i'm going to now um really um touch on some points of uh the book that uh, some key points on the book resilience the science of mastering life's greatest challenges so point number one is to be optimistic now 
This doesn't mean pretending horrible events are, you know, uh, pretending horrible events are great and sweeping all of the difficulty under the rug. Instead, um, they found that resilient people uh, who had to ensure uh, uh, have great uh, hardship were able to pair a, res a realistic worldview with a sense of positivity. Um, they pay attention to the negative as long as it is useful. Otherwise, they don't dwell on the negativity and get hung up in the emotional turmoil it causes. This outlook helps resilient people observe difficult situations more objectively. They can determine the most useful way to behave in the situation to get through it and then move on with without quite as much emotional heaviness this attitude is it's extremely helpful for um entrepreneurs if you're uh, running your own business because uh, we all face challenges it is a regular part of you know life uh having your own business it is a regular part of the job description really and and we all fail often several times before we get where we want to be so if we let our emotions go to a negative place each time we had a setback bounce bouncing back would be so much harder and thomas edison once said i have not failed i have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So there's the uh, positive reframe that really helps cultivate resilience. Dwelling on failure simply is not, it's not a useful thing to do. What is useful is the information that you learn each time you fail and having the resilience to get back up and try again. So, so the way I see it is go into the world understanding the reality of the situation, but choose to be confident in yourself anyway. Choose to see the positive and let it get you through life's bigger challenges. And my next point here is, uh, is to face your fears. Resilient people do not walk around the world afraid of everything, and they don't let the things they are they are afraid of hold them back when you let your fears control you you become even more afraid of them on the other hand exposure to your fears will help you realize they weren't as scary as you thought when resilient people face the things that they are afraid of they will they are still scared but they don't let the desire to give up or seek, um, seek safety win. They think instead that this is a lesson that they can learn from. They, they have the awareness to know that enduring a difficult situation is going to help them build strength and resilience. If a child were afraid of looking under her bed, you wouldn't tell her that that's the best approach was never to look under the bed right. So you'd probably you know shine that light right underneath the bed and show her that it isn't so scary and this is the same idea in in business in whatever that you want to do it often looks like taking risks putting new you know when you're putting new ideas out there or trying something that has never been done before and these things can feel terrifying but usually Facing your fears leads to new insights, even if you don't get the results that you are quite looking for. And the next time you need to take a risk, you won't, you won't be as afraid. You'll have the evidence behind you to prove that facing your fears was, was a fruitful endeavor. And it was a psychologist, Susan Jeffers, who wrote, feel the fear and do it anyway. And I completely agree with that after all that's what all the most resilient people do so i'm going to move on to uh the next point which is uh to have a moral compass and in their book uh, carney and southwick said each person they studied has a clear idea of right and wrong no matter how terrifying or life-threatening their circumstances they're always followed by this moral compass. They, 
they always made sure they were looking out for others rather than just themselves. And as a business owner, doing your fitness classes, being an entrepreneur or being a fitpreneur, it is equally as important to understand your values and hold true to them in difficult times. Whereas hopefully your situation will never become life-threatening, you should still maintain morals like honesty, ethics and integrity. And you could make them known you know, make them known within your business, make them known and set them up as your company's core values, set them up as what you truly believe and offer value to other uh, to other individuals. And having a, a moral compass, both as an individual and as a team um, with whoever you're working with will help you stay afloat really will during difficult times it will also help you and whoever you're working with bounce back and make more progress once you emerge on the other side and the next point i'm going to raise here is practice spirituality scientists studying resilience have found that spirituality was especially crucial for those who survived tragedy and this doesn't mean you need to pick up a new spiritual practice if you don't already have one one of the most critical components of spirituality for cultivating uh, resilience is the sense of community. Most people who practice spirituality feel a deep sense of social support. The spiritual nature can deepen the sense of connection people feel. It can also strengthen their concept of a moral code. So whether you practice mindfulness, attend weekly spiritual gatherings or none of the above, you can still work on your values and find other ways to strengthen your sense of community. And you can do this by, you know, meeting through uh, Zoom online, creating that community, creating those, those gatherings and really strengthening your sense of community. And this, this actually brings on me onto my next point, which is get social support. Being able to rely on family or friends is crucial during difficult times and it's it's a concept best represented by a uh, vietnam prisoner of war admiral robert shoemaker when he was isolated from the other prisoners he began tapping on his cell and other prisoners could hear his tapping and they tapped back he had no other human interaction so this simple communication tool was what kept him going on those difficult days all the way to the end of the war and did you know that social support can actually affect our nervous systems too when we feel a sense of social support our brains release oxytocin this hormone helps reduce stress calms calms us down and makes us more resilient in difficult situations and we can get it both by receiving social uh, support and actually offering it. And this could be uh, bonding with other fitness professionals, uh, instructors, fitness owners. And at Bally Be Fit, we really do have such a community. So there's there's always someone to talk to. You can tell them about yourself and you can ask them questions to get to know to get to know them. You can jump in our Facebook group, the Ballet Fitness Room. You can communicate and connect with other instructors and other people that have an absolute passion for dance, ballet and fitness. And you can really build that social support and build that community. And obviously we might, you know, we're not really able to kind of meet up right now but you could arrange zoom calls and you can really take the time to talk taking an interest in other um, in another person's world is immensely helpful when it comes to um to resilience and asking uh, you know and speaking of, of of people helping you cultivate resilience let's let's actually move on to my next point 
which is to have resilient role models. And that's really important too. Please keep putting that feedback in. It is great to hear from you. Love to hear what's going on, how you're dealing with the current situation, how you coping um, and uh, with mindfulness. Are you practicing spirituality? Are you building your social support, your communities? Um, love to hear, love to get that, that feedback fantastic to have you on in, on here today guys so keep the keep the support coming coming through so as i say it's also important to have resilient role models M many people who've gone from rags to riches had someone inspirational to look up to and um, most of us have a parent a teacher a mentor or a famous role model who has encouraged us somewhere along the way and in their book, Southwick uh, and Carney said that this was a core factor for those who demonstrated high levels of emotional resilience. They said that um, the people who researched, who went through difficulty and later bounced back to lead healthy and prosperous lives all had a role model they looked up to. This was a person who inspired them in terms of values, outlook and behavior but if you don't have a role mo model it, it turns out that that's okay too and um, the authors said people who had a you know a specific people that they did not want to be helped like in a similar way they say that this type of person could be viewed as a negative role model and um, this specific example could really help steer the resilient person towards the healthful the you know the healthy and successful life that they want so you might actually um, have a, a kind of somebody that you think oh no absolutely and uh, that steers me away from that so that it actually leads you and takes you to uh, a more healthy and successful uh, successful life um you see, seeing another person as either someone you do or someone that you do not want to emulate can really help you get specific about your goals and about where you want to be rather than just saying, well, rather than just saying that you want to be successful, you can decide how you want to do it. Um, whether that's like the way that your role model did it, or you might want to steer clear of the behaviors of say of a negative role model. Either way, this provides more clarity to navigate the, the difficult times and more direction to keep going once you work past them. So I'm glad, Sarah, you're enjoying the um, the session and you're feeling a little bit lighter and brighter about the current situation already. That's what I hope to do. That's what I hope to kind of achieve is just give some direction and some guidance some strategies uh, and, and share them with you so that through these difficult times, we can all work together build that community and get and really get through this and i'm going to always say this but uh another point is to maintain physical fitness and obviously i love this point because it's been so true to you know for my own personal uh, experiences and often people who uh, are resilient they're not just mentally strong they also have great fitness habits too which keep their bodies strong and this really does build emotional resilience because exercise helps us adapt it shows us that we can accomplish difficult tasks and survive the challenges that stand in our way and for people that get stuck in emotional or anxious thinking, exercise tests them by putting their bodies through similar uh, symptoms that they endure when they are stressed. Their heart rate, their heart rate, and the breath uh, speeds up, and and you begin to sweat, which are actually similar symptoms uh, that one might experience during an you know an anxiety attack, and. You can then learn uh, that you can tolerate these sensations and 
then you're less likely to feel fear when the anxiety symptoms emerge. And I am a firm believer that exercise is good for uh, everyone um, and really good for business owners, entrepreneurs, anybody in you know really stressful situations. Fitness offers us a way to process our frustrations it's a healthy outlet that we can turn to so that stress doesn't feed back into what we're doing in our daily life into our into our businesses into our our careers when we release the stress of the day through fitness we are more likely to come back to the to the work what we need to do feeling refreshed rather than overwhelmed by the stressful circumstances we'll also feel more confident in our ability to handle the challenges that will inevitably come up so the next point i've got here is keep your brain strong and this means taking the time to keep learning all throughout our lives and the greatest entrepreneurs and most resilient people are lifelong learners something which you know equates to a sort of mental fitness really bill gates famously reads about a book a week on a whole variety of different topics from the most interesting to the most dense and information heavy and this isn't just important for your mindset but staying mentally fit also has a positive health benefit benefits it is excellent for mental health in terms of both well-being and recovery it is also helpful for coping with stress self-esteem a sense of purpose and socialization and in terms of your work being a business owner entrepreneur fitness professional this means that the skill that you want to pick up for your business could really provide you with health benefits too. So you need to continuously learn and grow, not only for the benefits of your business and what you're doing, but it makes you more emotionally resilient as an individual as well. So if you keep putting off taking that new course or reading a new book, you have even more, you know, you know, you have really even more reason to dive in because it's going to help you grow your business, the benefits of your business, your career, whatever it is, but it's also going to help you be more resilient as an individual. So don't put off taking that that course, doing what you really want to do. Um, it will really help you in these uncertain times. You will become more resilient as an individual. And my next point is to be cognitively flexible. This means that you not only have a method of dealing with difficulty, but you have multiple ways of coping and bouncing back. It means being flexible with how you approach challenges and not relying too much on one mean, you know, one way of powering through it. So think for a minute, um, you know, just think how could this look? And it's actually quite a surprising answer. The key is humor. Everyone from veterans to cancer patients have proven the effectiveness of using humor to get through challenging situations. Humor is an excellent tool for building mental flexibility. It helps people um, experiencing significant challenges, muster the ability to, to handle stress and the resilience to bounce back afterwards. We bond by laughing. This is an own, you know, this just isn't great from a, as a social tool, but it is really effective for building emotional resilience. And my next point here is, is to find meaning in what you do. And this might sound, you know, for some, for people that are doing, are pursuing the passion, doing what they love, building that business, it might, you know, it might sound quite obvious, um, I'd say. But some, you know, you know doing your calling, doing your why, you really need that. What 
just ask yourself, what is the reason you're doing what you are doing? What is the primary purpose that gets you out of bed in the morning and keeps you grinding away, even on the most challenging days? And I bet, I bet most of you have a clear idea of what this is, you know, in your head right now, whether you do it for you family or because you're passionate about your work, finding a deeper purpose helps you ta really tackle challenges head on. And no matter what the task is, whether you love it or you hate it, you can use that purpose to help you muscle through, drive through difficulty or uncertainty. When you find that deeper meaning, you no longer think about the emotional hang-ups you have or the frustration, you know, the frustrations that you're currently enduring. You can see past them to get the task done. So the next time you're facing a challenge or even just an unpleasant task, use a deeper meaning to convince yourself to press on and really get through it. So in summary, this is what you need to do. You need to do the following things that I'm going to share with you, just to reiterate, the following things to build emotional resilience. And that's to cultivate more optimism, to face your fears, to have a moral compass, practice some form of spirituality, develop a strong social support network, have a few resilient role models to look up to, maintain physical fitness, always continue learning, cultivate flexibility and know the meaning behind your actions. Um, this is, you know, really what are the key points here to building up emotional resilience. And it isn't always, you know, as easy as just kind of waking up and, and doing all of these characteristics. It does take time and it does take practice, but there are a few ways you can practice that will help you, which will help you to develop that emotional resilience you're after by working at it just a bit each day, you can develop, you know, you can develop this quality within yourself. And now, now really is a fantastic time to get started. So I'm gonna go on and I'm just gonna tell you my personal top five tips for cultivating emotional resilience. And my first tip is self-awareness. Take the time to learn your behaviours that may be helping or making it harder for you to bounce back during a time of stress. What do you do in your daily life that helps with uh, emotional resilience? Do you have a great so you know? Do you have great social connections? Do you have a spiritual practice or a great fitness routine? And likewise what are the some of the some of the things you do that may not help you so much maybe you stay rigid or put your guard up when things get tough perhaps you let yourself operate from a place of fear just take the time to notice these things without judging yourself and think about some small ways you can add more resilience into your behavioral patterns and my next tip is accept things as they are. Yes, accept yourself. Even if you've just identified some traits that frustrate you, accept your circumstances, even if they are incredibly frustrating. Don't spend too much time indulging in your frustration and emotions or wishing things were different. Accept what's going on and even and even accept how you feel about it and allow yourself to move forward to proceed from a more objective standpoint. When you accept things as they are, you can move on to um, a more solution focused approach to to the situation. And then my third tip is to find achievable fitness, you know, an achievable fitness routine that you love. And you knew I was actually going to, I was bound to include fitness at some point, right? And obviously I mentioned it, mentioned it early. And for me, obviously it was rediscover, 
rediscovering ballet, uh, which was such a crucial part of my story and why and where I am today. Exercising every day helped me really reframe my life. And before I began developing my ballet focused fitness method, I spent days frustrated with my life and with myself. Fitness allowed me to regain a sense of confidence, a sense of control. And that's why I've actually decided right now to hold a Bally Be Fit boot camp, which is going to be for 21 days. And it's going to be starting on the 10th of November. And this is where we can all come together. We can come together and work out. We can improve our fitness and we can learn about the Bally Be Fit technique and really get to know um, each other, the Bally Be Fit community. And you can make the choice whether you want to become a Bally Be Fit instructor after um, this boot camp. And it's all going to be online, it's going to be virtual. And I really think right now, I wanted to do something that would really do that sense of community, help, you know, as I say, ballet really helped me regain a sense of confidence and control. And that's why I really want to offer this boot camp for 21 days, starting the 10th of November. Uh, it's all about the ballet Fit method. We'll be you know, talking to other instructors that have joined the Ballyby Fit family and it really will be about you if you decide to sign up and do it getting to know me getting to know other instructors and deciding if in these difficult times this is something that you really really want to want to want to do and join our family and another great benefit is you're going to absolutely be in incredible stuff uh, shape after the 21 days it's every single day with me doing a class and by the end of the 21 days uh, you'll be in amazing shape you'll have strength flexibility and if you want to become an instructor you'll be in such a strong position to go out there and teach the ballet fit class so I promise you, if you sign up for that, and I put the link in the comments box, that you will you will also really notice uh, that your confidence levels, your sense of purpose is there, and you'll really notice more uh, emotional resilience too. So, if you want to uh, get some details of that, there's a link there to go onto our waiting list, and then what we will do is we'll contact you say the time we're going to start doing it and give you all the information so that you can join um, the Bally Be Fit boot camp, uh, my boot camp. So I'm just going to move on to another tip now is to break down challenges and break them down into small steps. When we're faced with you know, a massive, uh, you know, monstrous tasks that can feel so overwhelming that we, that we may just want to run in the opposite direction. And this can lead to procrastination, anxiety and inefficiency. So rather than taking, you know, that approach and feeling like that, break things down into more realistic steps. Focus on what can be done and how you can make it happen today. Don't put more onto your to do list than you can realistically uh, you know, get done in one day. And seeing yourself cross things off the to-do list and make a dent in your biggest task will help you feel less overwhelmed um, by, by them. And um, my fifth tip really is to communicate. If your mind is worrying with all, you know, with all of the thoughts, emotions, fears, and everything else that gets in the way of developing resilience, Try getting them. Try getting them out of your head in some way. Whether you, to, you know, whether you choose to do a, you know, a brain dump or speak with a friend or even channel your frustrations into a piece of art or you know, do something creative. I'll always go back to doing exercise and fitness. You really will feel better afterwards. Learn how you to. You know, learn how you prefer to express yourself and get these thoughts out so they are no longer um, you know, impeding in your, in your progress. 
emotional resilience is a crucial asset if you if you want to be successful in life, um, if you want to run a successful business, have a successful career, whether that's in the fitness industry or whether that's in another industry, but it's also crucial for um, life in general. This quality will help you overcome difficulties and bounce back faster every time. Times like now really make um, you know emotion that's so clear, this point so clear right now. So moving forward despite the uncertainty that remains in our lives i hope you can really utilize some of these ideas and work to maintain cautious optimism and look after yourself both mentally and physically employ these these tools in a way that works well for you and watch your resilience improve over time so that's actually the end of my live stream for today. And I would love you to tune back in for our live stream next week, our session next week. Um, I know this one's been very much on emotional uh, resilience, but I thought with you know going back into lockdown and where we are right now, that I thought it was really important to, to talk about this uh, topic right now to really help you um, find a direction and a purpose and not feel so over overwhelmed um, in these in these difficult times. Next week on the live stream, I'm gonna be jumping back to a little bit uh, more fitness and uh, ballet inspired topics. And what I have a great live stream for you um, next week. I've got uh, an expert called Richard Playfair. He is an expert on fitness video production so he's going to be talking with me he's going to be sharing his tips and techniques on how to set up produce great videos we'll be talking about virtual we'll be talking about how to set your setting for your virtual classes and how to produce great videos whether you're going to be doing um, pre-recorded or you go in live for your fitness business so you really won't want to miss that that's going to be an amazing live stream next week so in the meantime, I'd love you to let me know what your favorite takeaway from today's session is. And I can't wait, you know, I can't wait to hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And as I say, if you're interested in becoming an instructor, please, please, if you're interested in becoming a Bally Be Fit instructor, please join me and get to know what we do and get in shape and have fun at the same time, escape from everything and join me on my 21 day Bally Be Fit Bootcamp, which is starting on the 10th of November. As I've said, um, the link's in the comments box. If the team can just put that link in again, that would be absolutely fantastic. We will then get in touch with you and then we will um, really uh, arrange the details so that you can join that boot camp. I promise you, you'll get to meet some amazing like minded people. It will really help you in these uncertain times. You'll feel the sense of community. Um, so please check the link and sign up for that. And if you want to find out uh, more about um, Bally Be Fit and what we do, you can find out more uh, about it in this Facebook group, the Bally Fitness Room, or you can check out uh, ballybefit.co.uk where you can see what courses and training that we offer. So as always, thank you for joining me today. Thanks everybody for the comments. Thanks Sarah, thanks Lisa. Thank you everybody for um, taking the time out to to listen to this live stream. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next week. So see you soon. I hope you have an amazing week. So that's it from, uh, you know, from Hello Monday. That's it from me. I will see you real soon. And as I say, thanks for joining uh, us today. And hi, Rebecca. Um, thanks, I'm glad you enjoyed the podcast. And Great to hear that you would love to do the boot camp. I will look forward to seeing you on the boot camp, Rebecca. Um, it's going to be, as I say, completely amazing. And it's just going to be so nice to really have that sense of community um, and the social interaction, which we all so need right now. So as I say, everybody, that's it from me. 
thank you for listening take care have an amazing week and i will see you next week for a very exciting live stream podcast take care everybody see you then bye 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 thanks for tuning in to hello monday be sure to visit the ballet fitness room to join the conversation access the show notes and discover our fantastic bonus content join us next time for more tips and techniques bye for now